When you think of Vincent van Gogh, what colour comes to mind? Often, people picture the colour yellow and paintings like this, Our Sunflowers, painted in Arles in 1888. The yellow in van Gogh's paintings from this period capture not only the colour of the sunflowers, but the whole experience of arriving in the sun-drenched south of France. Fellow artist Paul Gauguin wrote in 1894, Oh yes, he loved yellow, this good Vincent, this painter from Holland. Those glimmers of sunlight rekindled his soul that abhorred the fog that needed the warmth. Van Gogh's paintings of sunflowers are perhaps his most iconic and well-loved works. So what was the yellow pigment that Van Gogh used? The pigment is chrome yellow, which contains the elements lead and chromium. The range of yellow and orange colours we see in the sunflowers has not simply been achieved by mixing a single chrome yellow pigment with other colours, but in fact at least three separate lead chromate pigments have been used. Lead chromate occurs in nature as the mineral crocoite and it was from this mineral that the element chromium was first isolated by French chemist Louis-Nicolas Vauquelin in 1794. Chrome yellow, the pigment, derives its name from the element, chromium, which in turn comes from the Greek word chroma, meaning colour. So, how is chrome yellow made? Chrome yellow pigment can be produced by mixing solutions of chromate or dichromate salts with solutions of lead salts with the insoluble yellow pigment then precipitating out of solution. Here I have a colourless solution of the soluble lead salt, lead acetate in water, and to this I will slowly add this solution of potassium chromate, which gives a yellow solution when dissolved in water. As they're mixed, lead chromate starts to crystallise as a solid coming out of solution. You can start to see at the bottom that they're starting to get solid forming, and it will just gradually come down so that we're just left with solid uh, lead chromate, an insoluble material, which we can then collect by filtering it. And then we can get a look at what we've collected. It's not quite dry, but here we can see our chrome yellow pigment. You would wash that and then let that dry, and then this becomes the powder pigment that could be mixed with a binding medium and form your uh, chrome yellow tube paint. But Van Gogh wasn't the only artist interested in this bright yellow pigment. About 10 years after he first isolated the element chromium, in around 1804, Vauquelin suggests chrome yellow might be suitable for use by artists. From about 1816, chrome yellow became more widely available as a pigment. One of the earliest examples of the confirmed use of this pigment in a painting in the National Gallery London is in a work by Sir Thomas Lawrence, The Red Boy, dated to 1825. A number of other British artists were also earlier users of chrome yellow, including John Constable and J.M.W. Turner. Turner used both chrome yellow and a range of other related yellow chromate pigments. In The Fighting Temeraire, for example, painted in 1839, the principal brilliant yellow is a barium chromate pigment, often referred to as lemon yellow. It helps create his blazing sunset. Chrome yellow was widely used throughout the 19th century by the Impressionists and other artists. Why was chrome yellow so popular with artists? It was the first really bright, strongly coloured yellow pigment with a high degree of opacity. Chrome yellow remained popular until the end of the 19th century, when the more light stable cadmium red and yellow pigments became available. The pigment, in a stabilised form, continued to be used into the 20th century, and it wasn't just popular with artists. It was also used as the pigment in yellow road markings and the yellow of taxis. Indeed, it's still produced today, but as with all lead and chromium containing pigments, the use of the pigment is being phased out because of its toxicity. In common with other artists of the period, Van Gogh was using tube paints prepared by Cullerman. Cullerman were commercial manufacturers and suppliers of paint. In earlier periods, artists had to make their own paint by combining pigments with a binding medium. With the invention of the collapsible metal paint tube in the mid-19th century, artists such as Van Gogh were able to work outdoors or en plein air, a practice that was popular among the Impressionists. The portability of paint tubes was integral to such practices. 
Filmmaker Jean Renoir, son of the Impressionist painter Pierre-Auguste Renoir, stated that his father once said, without paints in tubes there would have been no Cézanne, no Monet, no Sisley or Pissarro, nothing of what journalists were later to call Impressionism. We can see how Van Gogh relished the possibilities that working with tube paints offered him. He contrasted thickly applied impasto passages with areas of flat brush strokes and more thinly applied paint. He appears to be in applying paint almost directly from the tube, allowing him to build up his thick impasto and seems to have hardly mixed or blended the colours on his palette before he applied it to the canvas. As he worked very rapidly and tend to apply paint over other paint that was still wet, we can see streaks of other colours pulled into the brush strokes. When we look at tiny paint samples from the sunflowers in cross section, we see the intermingling of the paint layers, which is typical of these wet in wet applications. How do we know what pigments Van Gogh used? Van Gogh was very interested in and specific about his choice of paints. Through his letters to his brother Theo and to fellow artists, we have an unusually good record of his choice of painting materials. He used commercial oil paints supplied in tubes generally purchased via his brother from Tassé Hello and Père Tongue art supply stores in Paris. In a letter to the artist Arnold Koenig dated to January 1889, but believed to be describing the London Sunflowers and its companion work on a blue background, which is now in Munich, Van Gogh describes them as being painted with the three chrome yellows, yellow ochre, Veronese green or emerald green and nothing else. Technical examination and pigment analysis has allowed us to confirm that this description is broadly correct and that the main yellow to orange pigments used in the London version of the sunflowers are indeed a variety of chrome yellow pigments. In a letter to his brother dated the 4th of September 1888, just after Van Gogh completed the London version of the sunflowers, the artist attached a paint order which includes three types of chrome yellow. A pale lemon yellow designated as number one, a medium yellow as number two, and a deeper orange as number three. By analysing tiny samples from the painting prepared in cross-section, it was indeed possible to identify three chemically distinct types of lead chromate-based paint. These are likely to correspond to the three types of chrome yellow tube paints mentioned in the letter. We can even get some idea of how Van Gogh used these three types of chrome yellow across the picture. This is possible with X-ray fluorescence scanning, which can be used to generate images showing the distribution of different chemical elements across the painting. Sunflowers is in fact the first painting I scanned after we acquired this equipment at the National Gallery in 2017. In this image, I've coloured the element map for chromium in red, that for lead in green, and that of zinc in blue, and then overlaid the three maps. The areas that appear orange broadly correspond to areas rich in the mid-yellow paint containing chrome yellow type 2, for example, while those areas that appear yellowish are rich in the pale yellow paint corresponding to type 1. Chrome yellow pigments did have some issues. Discoloration was a known problem. Van Gogh was attracted to the vibrancy of the chrome yellow pigments and a number of other pigments that became available to artists in the late 19th century. But he was also very aware and concerned about the longevity of his colours. In a letter from April 1888, he noted, when referring to chrome yellow pigments amongst others, that all the colours that Impressionism has made fashionable are unstable. Further, in another letter he states, paintings fade like flowers. Although some pigments tend to fade over time, the chrome yellows tend instead to darken when exposed to light, with the stability depending on the chrome yellow type. There is evidence of some darkening and a reduction in the contrast between the different yellows and the loss of some of the pinkish red colours, likely within Van Gogh's own lifetime. We try and preserve paintings such as this and prevent or slow further change by carefully controlling the light levels and environmental conditions throughout the gallery. However, despite these changes, our version of Vincent van Gogh's Sunflowers still offers a stunning visual feast for the eye. If you'd like to hear more stories about art, click here or here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.